was the best sermon I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> Man, I got a lot on my mind. It's uh, it's been a it's been a busy month. There's one more day left, right? One more day left in the month. Who's had a who's had a busy month? Who's who's had blessings in the month? Uh, who's, who's had trials and tribulations? Always, every day. So, um, you know, at the beginning of this month, I got up here and I was talking about, you know, some of the things that I was doing. And I was talking about a gentleman named Dave Bryan. And that's the uh, veteran. Can you turn that down just a tad? Sorry. Uh, you know, he, he's a veteran and, you know, 20, 20 plus year friend of mine. I grew up with his kids. And, you know, he had a. Uh, ALS, and you know he was on some really tough stages, and I talked about him being, you know, in a hospital bed, and just the atmosphere that was in the house, the atmosphere of God was present in the house. That, you know, in, in most situations you don't, you don't have that. You know what I mean? Like they've been taking care of him, uh, you know, for for quite some time, and you know I was so blessed. Uh, three weeks in a row, I, I got to go see Dave, and uh, Dave passed. But I, I know where Dave is. Dave, Dave is with the Lord. Dave is with the Lord. You know, um, in the last seven days, I've uh, ordained two weddings and preceded a funeral. I'm going to say, you know, I, I had a great time at, at both of the weddings. It was, it was a good time, but it was an honorable, honorable thing to, to, to do this funeral. And... Um, you know, it made me think, and you know, I want to read this Bible verse. It's uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, 13, and just a little part of 14. And it says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. Reading this makes me want to challenge myself to seek God more. I question myself, am I seeking the Lord with all of my heart? And we all just raise our hand for, you know, multiple situations th th throughout the month that we've experienced. And I'm, I'm asking myself, did I seek the Lord in all of these things? And, you know, reading this, when, when I seek the Lord, um, I will be found, and he will bring me back from captivity. So what is captivity? We hear this word a lot. Captivity is the condition of being imprisoned or con confined. It's a personal thing. I'm not. I'm not. Behind, I'm not behind bars. This isn't saying being released from prison, but this is the self captivity that the that the world puts us that we put ourselves in, and and we can be delivered from that. And what do we do when we're delivered from that? We we run the race that God gives us. First uh, Corinthians nine twenty four to twenty seven says, "Do you not know that the race? Do you not know that in the race all runners run, but only one gets the prize?" Only one person running in, in an athletic race, in, in an athletic uh, competition, you know, football teams, only one, one team is going to win, and the race only one person is going to win. So run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Amen. Therefore, do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave, so, there, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. So I'm going to explain this a little bit, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Dave's story and how it encouraged me. And I know at the beginning of the month it encouraged all of you. Um, you know, so the, the believer enters the Christian race and enters to win. In an athletic competition, contest, every runner, runner enters the race for one purpose only, to win. However, only one receives the prize. There is only one winner. The believer enters the Christian race for the purpose only to win. Therefore, he, he strains in running to obtain the prize. For me, nothing is acceptable except for running and running hard. The believer must obtain an incorruptible crown. The runners in an athletic contest run to obtain a passing fame or a corruptible trophy. We must run as diligently as the runner at the Olympic Games. 
the believer must put on the same kind of vigorous effort in order to reach the finish line. He must be vigorous and diligent. He must persist in the Christian race. And, you know, being uh, with Dave over the last few weeks and just knowing him for so long, um, he ran the race. He, he ran the race and he reached the finish line. You know, I've done multiple funerals. And I've done a couple where I didn't know exactly where they went when they died. You know what I mean? I didn't have that confirmation. See, and that's what I'm saying. This, this funeral was, was different because I knew where he was. Dave was a whosoever. What's a whosoever? Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Who believes that? Do you, who's a whosoever? Who knows that when you pass, 100% you're going to heaven? Raise your hand. Amen. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> That's outlaw of Christian country. <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, getting to do this funeral and knowing exactly where he went, this went so different. It, it was a celebration of life. And, you know, that's when I hit my end time, I want whoever precedes my funeral to know that without a shadow of a doubt, I'm in heaven. Now, how do we do that? How do you do that? Yeah, live, live like Jesus. Live like Jesus throughout all situations, all circumstances. Fix your eyes on him. Fix your eyes on him. Not only is it good for you, but it's good for those that are around you. So many people were touched by Dave. And because, you know, as he was going through this condition, he never lost hope. He never lost faith. And I, I, I read, uh, you know, something that was written about him, and, and that stated that clearly. So now I had said the atmosphere had changed. I the, was different. Was different than what you'd expect going into an environment like that. You know, through Dave going to church, I watched an entire household change. See, we can change the atmosphere. We can cultivate the ground of our homes and around us by, by what we do. So Dave going to church... The whole family went to church. His his wife was baptized. I baptized his stepson. He was, you know, he was involved. And, you know, consistently being perfected to know who he is in Christ and not who he is in the world. Because it's so easy to give up with what the world offers us. But we don't give up with Christ. And uh, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness... Let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured so much opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You know, reading, reading these stories in the Bible, right? There's so many times that it could have been easy to be weary and to lose heart. I mean, I talked about, last time I was up here a week ago, I talked about Noah. It had taken over 100 years to build the ark. How easy would it have been to grow weary and lose heart? What about when Abraham was called to, you know, sacrifice Isaac? That was a three-day journey. Very easy to be weary and lose heart. What about Moses? When he was called back to Egypt and he went back, you, you think it would have been not, he, he wasn't weary and he didn't lose heart. Why? Because he knew that God was for him. See, they were seeking the Lord with their entire heart and they were found and, and brought out of captivity. See, when you seek the Lord with your entire heart, the, the mission that you're put on might it might not make sense. The, the circumstance that you're in, it might suck. But don't be weary and lose heart because God is with you. Who believes that? Easier said than done in the circumstance. And when you're, when you're the person hearing it, right? Oh, man, I, that's a hot seat. I try to stay out of it. But, <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, uh, how we example ourselves through trials, tribulations, things that are happening 
it radiates to other people. There, there's a ripple effect. Like how I conduct myself through through tough stuff. You know what I mean? That might speak to somebody else. And, and there's proof because I've, I've seen it so many times. And, you know, this guy, Dave, he, he touched so many people. And we, we did a call for salvation, you know, at the end of that. And, I mean, it was loud with everybody repeating this prayer. Um, that's the kind of legacy I want to leave, Right? I, I want to leave a legacy where I'm doing what God calls me to do, and and that I, you know, even though it's tough, I keep going. I don't, I'm not I'm not a quitter, and either are you guys. But for some, it's very very easy to quit. You know, people want to be uh, the hands and feet of Jesus. Who has heard that? Oh, I just want to be the hands and feet. Well, when when it gets tough, it's so easy to quit. I mean, Jesus' hands and feet were pierced with spikes as he was nailed to a cross. There's, there's tough work. There, 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 there is some pain and suffering that comes with it, but it's for his glory, not mine. You follow me? So Romans 5, 3 through 5 says, Not only so, but we glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God has, uh, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Easier said than done, right? Reading, reading these stories, but seeing it in real life. I mean, Gary, when you were in the hospital just this last weekend, you just sat up here and talked about glory in your suffering, right? And good things happen from that. Imagine if he would have had a bad attitude throughout the process. Do you think that he would have had that testimony of God showing up in that hospital room? It, it's so easy to just want to be weak and break, but I'm, I'm telling you that if you submit to Christ, all things are possible. And um, Romans 5, or 15.4 for everything that is written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in Scripture and the encouragement that they provide, we might have hope. Who has somebody in their mind that they know is, is, is a Christian, is, is a Christian leader that has dealt with some difficult things that you saw them get through it, and it gave you motivation and encouragement to get through your situation? They could be completely different. You know what I mean? But knowing that somebody else, man, how did he do that? How did he lay in that hospital bed only being able to move his hands and still give glory to God? How did he do that? Because he was a student. He was a student of the word. And, and he knew that endurance taught through scripture would give him hope. So true, so, so putting this in action, he lived that out and touched so many people, so many people, including myself, that made me think, how, how do I act? How do I, how do I respond? Because I've said this a couple times, life's not always easy. It, it can get tough. You can feel like the world's against you. But when, when you're in those moments, if you fix your eyes on God, good things will start to happen. You know, I was at a motorcycle event yesterday, and... It was about an hour ride out there, and I was, I was riding out there, and I was thinking about the week. I was thinking about, you know, things to come, and I wasn't very talkative. And I, I'm generally, you can ask Springer, I'm, I'm an extremely talkative person. I'm always walking around, shaking hands and kissing babies, but I was just kind of quiet, quiet yesterday, and, and I noticed that this morning. And I, and I was reminded of somebody that came up to me uh, and just started talking to me, and I just I wasn't myself. And he said, man, I hope you have a blessed day. You know what that did? Something clicked. Something clicked with me at that moment. Because someone said, have a blessed day. See, I'm, a, I always, I'm, I'm always wishing people a blessed day. I don't hear it as much. Do you hear it as much? You, you say it more than you hear it, right? This is, and I'm learning. This, is, this, is, this position and things that I'm doing are new. I have a, I have a lot of different you know, emotions and feelings and trials and tribulations that are growing my faith to continue to say yes. Yesterday I was a little bit dry and I got that sprinkle of water. Be blessed. Have a blessed day. You know what I did? I reached out to that guy this morning and I said, hey, I just want to thank you for coming up to me yesterday and talking to us. I've, 
had a lot on my mind. It's been, you know, a busy week. I've, I've got some projects and stuff that I'm working on. I just, I wasn't myself. But you changed my day when you came up and said, have a blessed day. Thank you. How many times do we disregard something small like that? Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. It's so easy to miss the small stuff. But I'm telling you, the small stuff matters so much. Because if you're going to miss the small things, you can't handle what's bigger. And I don't want to miss the small things. I don't want to miss the small things. I want to seek the Lord with my entire heart. I want to seek the Lord with my entire heart, no matter what. And, um, you know, within this uh, last month, I've been talking to this uh, inmate in Lucasville. I probably talked to him, what, 20 times this month? 20 or, you know, somewhere around there. And the conversations are anywhere from 30 minutes to 45. So I've, I've put some time into talking to this guy, and I'm working on teaching him to read the Bible. And I said this at the beginning of the month. He won't open that book. But I'm still there to listen. I'm still there to listen. Why? Because I'm getting to know him more. And it's going to give me the opportunity to plant the seed and speak into his life when the right time comes. Now, I've never been in prison. I, I couldn't imagine... You know what it would be like in there now there was a on thursday and friday I, I had so much going on this week that i missed i missed his call i wasn't i wasn't able to talk i had stuff going on and uh i talked to him yesterday and he said man i just want to tell you i'm really sorry and i was like why he's like well i sent a note to the chaplain that i couldn't get a hold of you and i wanted to see if there was anybody else that i could talk to He's like, but then I realized I reacted too quickly off my emotions. So I sent another message apologizing. You know, he's, he's had abandonment issues. I mean, I'm, I'm paying for the conversations that I'm having with this guy. You know what I mean? It's, it's, these are not free phone calls. How easy would that have been to get upset that He's now contacted the prison in this short moment of, you know, his misunderstanding of that I have a busy life. You know, I, it could have been easy. Like, why did you, why did you do that? You know, what, you know what I did? I laughed. I just laughed about it. And he's like, are you good? And I had to tell him like 17 times, like, dude, it's, it's all good. No worries. Like, I couldn't imagine being in your position. See, sometimes I think that we try to put ourselves in people's position to understand, but... If, I've never been in that position, so I can't relate, but I, I want to love him through it. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand what it's like in the day-to-day -day there. And, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, give, giving you an example of how easy it is for someone who's not grounded in Christ to flip that, that switch. So easy. We talked about, you know, I said it many, many times, how easy is it to give up and quit? How easy is it to give up and quit? So within the last 15 minutes, we talked about someone who went through ALS for three years, all the way down to where they could only use their hand, their, their hands, and, and never gave up. To someone that I'm slowly starting to mentor that doesn't have Christ in their life, 40, within 24 hours, they couldn't handle it. Why? Because they were weak in the mind. And, you know, as Christians, we can't be weak-minded. We can't let thoughts come against us. We have to hold them captive against the word of God. Does that make sense? So therefore, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, and win people to Christ by our example. Be like Dave. Dave. Dave was being like Christ. Be like Christ. Seek him with your entire heart, and you will find him. I think I say this verse every single time I've come up here and actually preached, and it's Hebrews 13. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. So as you're running this race, this, this Christian race, and, and getting the perseverance and Building character and 
stretching and growing and going through some, repenting. I've, I've had times where I'm like, man, Lord God, I can't believe that I acted like that in this situation. Change me. Change me. I want to be better. You want to know why? Why? I want to consistently be perfected. I want to consistently be perfected because I'll never, the day I arrive is the day that I meet Christ in heaven. Right? I want to continue on this journey so that one day I'll hear Matthew 25, 23. Well done, my good and faithful servant. So as you guys go on this week, I want to encourage you to question yourselves. Lord, am I seeking you with all of my heart, with everything that I have? Or am I halfway seeking you? Ask God to, to open your mind and open your heart. I encourage you to look for the small things. Maybe that one person that says, have, have a blessed day. Or maybe somebody gets the door for you, say thank you. Because they didn't have to do it. And I'm telling you, if you start with the small things, you can get on to the bigger things because we all have work to do. Every single person sitting in here is capable. We are all capable of doing God's work. And if you don't know what it is, seek him with your entire heart. And yeah, just know that, you know, I want to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Pray about that this week. And um, yeah, thanks for being here today. Let me, let me share this. I hope that it is encouraging. I, I, I hope that this is something that you think about throughout the week. You know what I mean? Something that you marinate on because, I mean, Steak is good, but marinated steak is way better, amen? <laughs> and I'll uh, close this out with prayer. Lord, Father God, I, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for everyone that is in here. Lord, I, I thank you that right now you are tilling the hearts and minds and planting seeds. Lord, I thank you that in some hearts and minds you are watering those seeds and, and, and the other ground that you are tilling so that it can be planted. Lord, Father God, I thank you that we want to seek you with our entire heart. Lord, teach us how to seek you with our entire heart. Let there be no selfish ambition in us. We don't want an, an we, we want the imperishable crown. Lord, we, we, we want the gold. Lord, Father God, I thank you that throughout this week we ask you, how can, how can we conduct ourselves among society and others and share your name to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen.